Here's Abhishek's attempt at mediating between Jared, Farooq and Shivank. Needless to say, he has his work cut out for him. India is the largest two-wheeler market space in the world and that's a well-known fact. And this market space has been evolving and very fast. So today, there's a type of motorcycle to suit every type of enthusiast on all sorts of budgets. And possibly one of the most exciting segments here would be the accessible performance motorcycle segment. Now the KTM Duke 390 was the first bike to pioneer that segment. But today we have a lot of offerings with different characteristics in the segment. And to represent each of these different types of motorcycles, I have with me today my colleagues, each of whom have different needs from a motorcycle. Meet Shivang. Shivank is a young and hard-working man who loves to ride. He wants something with new age technology and the best performance. And that's why he rides the KTM Duke 390. And this is Jared. Jared is a middle-aged man who likes fast bikes, but he also wants something that's comfortable and usable on an everyday basis. So he rides the Honda CB300. As for Arup, well, he's married and settled down, and he wants something that's classy and a little more sophisticated, and that's why he rides the BMW G310R on his bike. So my picks on the segment is the KTM 390 Duke, and I think it is the default choice of the segment. You see, first of all, it looks the sportiest of the lot. It has got a racy exterior with this loud orange paint job. Look at the frame, it's exposed, it looks very sporty indeed. The wheels, they are also orange and they look sporty. And the front end is my personal favorite because it has got that beefy look. It comes with LED headlamps that look very sharp and then there are those thick WP forks. So overall, if you are looking for a sporty motorcycle and I'll come to the performance later on, this bike not only delivers on performance but it also looks the sportiest of the lot. Now the problem with millennials is that they get carried away very easily. They look at specs and features and they feel it is the best in the business. But what I have with me is the BMW G310R. It resembles the S1000R, which is a great statement by itself. Now the design is simple, but it's muscular. Now that is how a naked bike should be. What I love is the way the tank is sculpted because it makes the bike look bigger. And on top of that, if you look at the front golden forks, you cannot mistake this bike with any other bike. Now the G310R comes with an LCD instrument cluster which has the speedometer, the tachometer, trip meters, fuel mileage, whatever you need, it has. Sure, the display is not color like the Duke 390, but that's not a deal breaker at all. But speaking of deal breakers, BMW could have used LED headlamps instead of the old halogen ones. There's only one way to sum up the design of the G310R. In words of Leonardo da Vinci, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication and that's exactly what this bike is. There are many reasons why I've chosen the Honda CB300R. Let's start with the design. It's a very nice compact design and I just love the way it looks on the road. It's very unique compared to the other bikes in this segment. Starting with the nice LED headlight, it looks very nice, very classic design. The fuel tank is nice and narrow and the seat's super comfortable. So Honda calls this bike a Neo Sports Cafe, but that's not what it looks like to me. It looks more like a street fighter. It's very nice and aggressive and very sporty. With the indicators that also look very nice, they're nice and narrow and sharp. I love the narrow frame, the compact frame as well. The engine fits in very nicely. It's got a nice set of tires and of course these awesome show suspension. I really think it looks better than the Duke and the BMW G310 and this bike is something that really definitely appeals to me. Now coming to the performance, the KTM simply dominates here. You see this bike has the biggest motor of the lot. It has got a 373cc engine and it delivers 43 bhp. None of the other bikes here are in the same zone. So you could almost say that it feels like it's from a segment above and that shows when you ride this motorcycle. The performance is really impressive. The throttle response 
everything about this bike it just goes everything just screams performance now to match the firepower of the engine KTM has equipped this bike with all sort of gizmos and it comes loaded with top quality cycle parts you see the suspension setup and the riding posture it's all inclined towards sporty performance and when you're riding this bike it shows you know the steering is really quick the handling is the best here it feels the most stable around corners and it is also the most involving of the three bikes here and not only acceleration even uh, when it comes to top speed stakes this bike is the fastest you can see 165 kmph on the speedo easily which is not the case with the other two here so when it comes to performance the KTM is simply the best and next honestly this bike is super comfortable to ride even though it's really small for a tall rider like myself I love the way the ergonomics are the KTM is just too cramped and too uncomfortable. This bike is very nice. Starting with the seat, it does seem like it's hard at first when you get used to it and it's very nice and comfortable. The handlebars are low and flat so you don't put too much weight in your wrist. And then of course, your legs are in a slightly aggressive position and that's great because if you want to ride in a very uh, fast manner around twisties, it does help you a lot. But then when you're in the city, it's super comfortable. The show suspension also is very, very nice. It's not too stiff as the KTM Duke. It's very plied on all road surfaces. And I love the way the tires grip the road, they're super nice. Honestly, overall, this bike is so practical for an everyday basis, whether you're riding in the city or on the highway. Sure, it doesn't have the performance or the peppiness of the KTM Duke, but this bike is so much more usable and it's so much more enjoyable. Now, the BMW G310R's seat height is only 785 mm. Now, this is what makes the bike practical. As you can see, I can keep my feet easily on the ground. Now the G310R is powered by the same 313cc engine which is also in the TVS Apache RR310. Now going by the specs with 34 bhp of power and 28 lm of torque, it doesn't sound like an all conquering naked bike but let's not just jump to conclusions yet. Now when you ride this bike at low speed it offers enough grunt but as it's a high revving engine it is better to keep the needle somewhere in the 4000 rpm range. Now, the mid-range power band is where this bike is the happiest. You can take it somewhere between 5000 rpm and go all the way till even 9000 rpm. It just doesn't let you down. It reaches a three-figure mark at ease, but mind you, there are vibrations that can be felt from the tank. Now, it is not as pronounced as the Apache, but when the speed increases, you can feel vibrations also from the seat. Now this bike has a 50-50 weight distribution, so the well-balanced chassis carves out corners without any problems at all. It's an effortless experience, and on top of that, it feels stable and planted, so you feel really confident. Now coming to the KYB suspension setup, it is just ideal for our riding conditions. It soaks in rough patches, bumps, you throw anything at it and it makes sure that the ride comfort is not at all compromised. Now that is something which the other two bikes will not be able to boast about. Now on top of all of this, this is also the best equipped bike here. It is the only motorcycle here that comes with a TFT color display and you can connect your phone to it uh, through Bluetooth. You can receive calls, you can change songs, you can do a lot, which is not the case again with the BM or the Honda. And then it has also got a ride-by-wire throttle and a slipper clutch. Now the icing on the cake is its pricing. You see it has got the best performance, it has got the biggest engine, it's the best equipped bike here and the handling is the sharpest. Plus it looks the sharpest and sportiest of the lot. And even then KTM has managed to price it really aggressively. So it's not just value for money, even on all the other counts the KTM simply is the best here and that's why it's my choice. So what are you expecting from a bike of this segment? Well, you should be able to ride in traffic conditions easily. It should have enough power. And on top of that, it offers an X factor. That is, its handling capabilities. Let's just look at the BMW badge and it speaks for it all. Yes, it is an expensive bike and starts at 2.99 lakhs X showroom price. But when you look at the fit and finish, the build quality, and even the way the buttons function, it easily is the best in the segment. And on top of that, the G310R beautifully balances both practicality, comfort and of course performance. 
one of the things I really love about this bike is that it's so light. It's 140 kilograms, and that's much lighter than both the other bikes we have today. And it's just so easy to maneuver, so easy to handle, especially when you're in traffic conditions. It's very nice to uh, swivel through uh, tight spaces. And then when you're parking, uh, pulling the bike in and out, super comfortable, very nice again. And then, of course, the suspension works very nice on all road surfaces, as I mentioned before. And then, of course, you've got the Honda badge on this, and that means reliability. This bike is going to be super reliable. The quality already is top-notch. It's the same price as the KTM Duke, and it's priced much lower than the BMW. And then, honestly, in my opinion, the quality on this bike is just as good as the quality on the BMW. It might not be as big and impressive on the road, but when it comes down to the bare necessities of what you want to do with this kind of a bike, it's absolutely amazing. can do almost anything and super nice to ride. The handling's fantastic with the show suspension. It's just an overall light steering bike that's got the peppy throttle, and it's a very nice overall machine that has good value for money, good reliability, and great quality. On top of that, it's super comfortable and highly practical. The fact is that each of these motorcycles is very different in its own way, and it's a good thing because finally, we have a lot of options that Indian buyers can choose from today. So each of these bikes appeals to a different type of customer. The Duke 390 will appeal to a much younger group of riders who demand high performance, sharp looks and new age features. The CB300 meanwhile appeals to riders who do not wish to compromise on comfort and practicality but also demand good overall performance. And then the pricey G3ZNR is aimed towards riders who are brand conscious and expect great riding dynamics with sophistication. Now don't go anywhere, 